Hello YouTube. Tamriel's history is filled with countless stories, both happy and sad. But one of the sadder stories is the tragic story of the two ancient lovers Fiori and Holgir. Their story is quite tragic as you'll see, both in life and in death, despite their love for one another. As you'll see in this story, it seems to be somewhat based upon the classic Shakespeare story of Romeo and Juliet, but with quite a few twists, especially after their death. So, on this Valentine's Day, let's delve into their story. So this story takes place in an ancient time, likely somewhere during the early first era or late Meretic era, likely during the final years of the Dragon Cult or early Nordic Kingdom, that period. Although we aren't fully sure on the time scale, but that's just to give you a bit of a time scale idea and to make you realize that to the people of modern day Tamriel of whom we learn this story, this story to them was at least more than 2000 years ago, meaning that it's most likely legend at this point and details may be exaggerated or wrong. But we do know that the story, or at least a version of it, happened because we can find ghosts of the unlucky lovers in the game, so this legend, or at least a version of it, did actually take place somewhere during Tamriel's history. Anyway, during this ancient time the peoples of Skyrim were colonizing Skyrim ever further south. They had started along the northern coast where they landed and they were now pushing southward. Now those who trekked southward likely organized themselves in clans as there wasn't any central government in Skyrim yet or it wasn't very strong. And these colonist clans mostly ruled themselves and the patches of land they claimed. One of these clans was led by the mighty warlord Holgir, a warrior of great renown, who led his clan in settling down in the northern parts of what is now the Rift. However, there was a slight problem, because in the area there was another clan, a clan who also claimed the area. These two clans warred with each other over supremacy and regularly skirmished in Skyrim's ancient forests. Until one day, right in the middle of a large battle between the two clans, the warlord Holgir crossed the 29-year-old Huntress Fury on the battlefield, who was a champion of her people. They crossed eyes and then crossed blades and found each other worthy opponents as they ended up fighting for hours. Their fight, according to legend, was so impressive that it made all the warriors of both clans stop fighting as they watched on silently as the two great warriors fought. After hours of fighting, Holgir's axe allegedly broke on Fiori's sword, but her sword had become so blunt because of his shield that it was barely more than a piece of scrap metal at this point. With no weapons left to fight with, they acknowledge each other as equals, and a bond of mutual respect formed between them, which according to legend quickly blossomed into a love for the ages. And with their love came peace and understanding between the two clans, who now lived in Skyrim's ancient forest as one, as the clan chief and their champion's love united them. However, as they say, happiness never lasts forever. And after some time, Holgir became terminally ill, according to legend because of a snake bites poison. Whether that was truly the cause, we don't know, but we do know that Fiori searched high and low for a cure for her lover's affliction. Legend says that she then obtained a mysterious elixir from the Akaviri. Uh, how, we don't exactly know, but she either sailed to Akavir all by herself, or she obtained them from Akaviri raiders, which hounded Tamriel's coast in these ancient times, which we also hear in another ancient Tamrielic story, the story of Lyraceus the Dragon Rider. A link to that story is in the description, by the way, if you're in the mood for more ancient Tamriel stories. Either way, no matter how she obtained it in truth, she obtained a cure for Holgi's affliction in the end, so she rushed home, only to find her lover on his deathbed. She then gave him the elixir and according to legend Holgir was instantly cured. However their reunion in good health was to be short lived as according to the legend the snake which had bitten Holgir returned as she gave him the last bit of medicine. And then of course the snake bit her instead. With the immense fatigue from her journey having exhausted herself and depleted her completely of energy, the snake's bite was almost immediately fatal and she passed away before a medicine could be found for her. Now, I highly doubt the whole snake thing here, uh, it more likely was either assassins with the snake being an allegory for traitor, or perhaps it was like a contagious sickness which Fiori contracted while caring for Holgir and giving him the medicine. I mean, what are the chances that that exact same snake fellow comes back and goes like, Lamau XD, I'ma bite the other one now, right when she used all the medicine. 
So, yeah, that's likely legend. So, yeah, but their story doesn't end here, as Holgir was so grief-strucken that he decided to dedicate the remaining of his life to building a tomb for Fiori and himself so that they could rest forever together in death. And just like with the Romeo and Juliet story, in the end, Holgir didn't want to live on without Fiori. So, upon completing their tomb, he took his own life to rejoin her in death. Their two clans then buried them together in their tomb, after which the clans would use their tomb, Ansilvud, which had become a symbol for their clan's unity as a burial ground for both clans, expanding the tomb for others to be interred in it, but leaving the central inner tomb with the two lovers forever closed. And that was to be their final resting place. However, as with so many dead in a world where necromancers exist, their eternal slumber together was eventually disrupted. Because in the fourth era, a necromancer by the name of Lula or Skaven invaded their tomb, resurrecting the ancient clansmen of Fiori and Holgir, who had also been interned in the large tomb, forcing them to excavate the deeper parts of the tomb and unlock the ancient resting place of the lovers. The necromancer had been drawn to this ancient tomb because of the story of the ancient lovers, and crucially, this necromancer was kind of off a rocker. You see, Lula Oskaven lost her husband in the Great War, and because of it she held a grudge against the Empire, since the Empire hadn't even returned his remains to her, rather burning his body before she could say her goodbyes. Now, this seems to be a pretty standard procedure for pre-modern armies, but logic does not soothe a grieving heart, and nor does it prevent people from turning mad. Because through some mad way of thinking, Lula Oskaven assumed that somehow if she obtained the body of Holgir, one of Tamriel's most ancient legendary lovers, she would be able to raise his body and rip her husband's soul from Aetherius and place it in Holgir's ancient body, using it as a vessel so that she could be with her husband again. Why Holgir's body was needed? No idea. Perhaps it had something to do with him dying in heartache, which may have made the process easier, but... I have no idea, it might just have been the mad thoughts of a very grief-stricken woman who was acting out of desperation. Her experiment, however, never ended up succeeding, but with her necromantic rituals in the attempt, she did manage to tear Holgir and Fiori's souls from their bodies and enslave their spirits and bodies, making them bow to her will. The player can then venture into Anselvud and kill Lula Alskaven, once more freeing Fiori and Holgir's souls. Their souls will then appear to the player and thank the player for freeing them so that they can be together again in afterlife. And they bestow then upon the player a unique ghost sword, an aptly named Ghost Blade. And that was the tragic story of the ancient lovers Fiori and Holgir. And I truly hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, maybe consider subscribing and returning for the next Elder Scrolls lore video, probably next week. Also, check out this person on Twitter, whether I had a little discussion with them on uh, the time period that this story was able to take place. They make a lot of Elder Scrolls lore posts on Twitter. So, yeah, a link to their profile is in the description. Now, all that remains for me to be done is to thank my top Patreon supporters. Mr. Bernardo Binna, Gabriel Binna, Polarized Poutin, Pavel T, Athena Iotis, Dragonborn of Nerevar, Volcure of Argonia, King Chris, Bulge, Scribe of the Scrolls, Doji, Fenrir, Sword of Bushido, Rakai, and Mr. Christmas. It's thanks to these people and all the others on screen that this channel stays alive and that I can make these videos. And for that, I am very grateful. That said, I hope to see all of you in the next Elder Scrolls lore video, probably next week. Bye-bye.